Good morning and welcome back to this series on uh, test driven development, uh, regression testing and unit testing in LISP and object orientation in LISP. So yesterday when I left you uh, we had written the unit test for the first of our four methods if you remember we had this system sequence diagram we had select object, select interaction, select interaction options and then start interaction. Um, we've done the select object thing. I should stress again that the fact that we do this as a series of calls uh, rather than as one single call means that we have to store a state in the game um, so that uh, the, we start a session here and we do all of this, these things within the session and when we do the start interaction here we finish the session. Uh, this means that the testing looks slightly weirder than usual. You really want the test to um, have one start and one finish and once you're done with one test you leave the system in a, sta in a normal state. Uh, the way I build these things uh, in this particular test is that I um, I start the session here and then I will continue in this same session for the next test um, which is really not how you're supposed to do it. Each test should be standalone. Um, how would I have changed this in order to make it uh, stateless if you will? Well, I would first of all I would make sure that this method, the the method that gets the game should also first of all uh, set up the test object and everything in there. I should get a new game for every test and basically it would be like uh, tailing on the next step of the session in each test. So the first test is doing this, next test is doing this and something else and the third test is doing this and something else and something more. Um, so you end up doing like the, the, the cat and the mouse, the dog and the cat, and the pig and the dog, and the horse and the pig, and so on, uh, trailing things onto each other. That's, I guess, the real way of doing, the proper way of doing things, um, especially if you start adding more methods, more tests, that's the way you really want it to be done. Uh, in this small example, I can cheat a bit by doing... Um, uh, having this session outside. Another thing which I'm doing which I probably shouldn't be doing is this uh, init method that I inject a new method into the class for the sake of testing. I didn't really need that. I wanted to uh, show off a bit. I could have done that inside the uh, get game method instead uh, just as easily. Um, one more thing to say before we continue is that, let's see, we did quite a bit. It took a while to get uh, through last, uh, the last video. Um, and that's a lot of work for just one test. But we did actually do quite a bit there. I mean, this is the test. And in order to do that, we needed to have the game. Uh, we needed or we wanted to have the test object inside the game and in order to have the object we wanted to have them in the right place and those that would mean that we have to have the scene that contains the test objects and so on. So there's quite a lot, a lot of things going on here that we actually did in order to come to a point where the first test passes. Fortunately now we've done all of that. As you can see we have all the classes. We have three classes up here uh, and one more down here. So all of that uh, scaffolding or infrastructure is in place. We have some of the methods already there um, to select objects and so on. So for the next uh, test, hopefully we, things will go slightly easier for us. Um, had we done this in real test-driven development, uh, the red-green refactoring thingy, I suppose that the first thing I would have done is that I would have put things inside the game game class um, and then I would have added more tests and then as I went along 
uh, I would have put up the rest of the scaffolding with the scene and the game element and the game object and then so on because only when I needed it. Uh, this is sort of a compromise that I get some of the uh, or most of the necessary uh, classes and structures in place uh, while still focusing on just getting this particular test to pass. You'll also notice uh, that this class, the, the game class, which is the interface, that it won't really work in the game yet because we, uh, we don't have any methods for adding objects, for example. We can just select those that are there that we have to give through some sort of constructor. Uh, we can't really do anything, we can't change the scene, we can't uh, look what's in the scene or anything. So there's lots and lots of methods that are missing. Those are obviously part of different use cases. So if we had done different the different use cases, we would eventually end up with a game that's actually usable as an interface class for this game. Right now, this it's only good for uh, satisfying the tests that we have. It's a good start. Uh, but it's nowhere near enough to actually uh, run this game. Okay, having said that, let's dive into the next test. Remember, we do the def test. And then the next test that we want to do is the uh, select interaction type. A clear indication, by the way, of how wrong it is to um, have session state uh, um, across different tests is the fact that you have to rely on naming the functions in a particular way to get them to run in a particular order. Uh, you should never have to worry about that. If you want things to be run in a certain order, you should make sure that you have a list, say, that you run in a certain order or something like that. You shouldn't rely on the function names. Um, that's an indication of how wrong this is. Uh, so feel free to feel a bit dirty about this. I know I do, but uh, uh, I'm going to plunder on anyway with this. So what do I do with this test? In, I select the interaction type for uh, the currently selected game object. And how do I do that? Well, let's do the let again. I want my game. In this case, I don't want to create a new one, so if, there, if a game already exists, I will get that one, uh, which means I don't have to worry about um, um, creating things and setting things up all again, all over again, which I then should really do if I had done this uh, properly. All right, and then what do I want to do in this test? I want to get my test object again. Since I have just selected an object, I did that in the previous test, I did it in the previous interaction, uh, I'm just going to dig in and get that uh, last selected object. And once I have that, I can start looking at, first of all, let's double check that I actually have a selected object. And then make sure that I, if I look at the interaction types I get from this, I could actually do that in here as well. There. I get, let's name that slightly better. 
available interactions. That sounds better. Uh, and now I can check that I actually have uh, some uh, interactions available there. Let's check that I actually have a few interactions uh, at all. I don't want this to be an empty list, that's basically what I'm saying. Maybe I can even see say that there should be a particular uh, interaction there as well. Oh, maybe maybe not. Let's stick with this for now. There we are. Evaluate this and run the test. And of course it fails, because I haven't done the get selected object method. That's what I get over it says over here. Um, and I haven't implemented anything else either. So let's go up to the class here, the, the game class. And here I just want to return the currently selected object, or nil if there is no selected object. Easy way to do this is to just reference the attribute which I'm going to add. Like that. That means that I need to add this attribute to the class. So I have something to look for. So now we have um, an attribute in this class called selected game object. Um, starts out having nothing in it. Uh, can be of anything, any type. Don't really care at the moment. Um, and then I need to fix this method that so that I, when I select an object, I actually store it as well. The way to do that would be to guess to do I guess check if I have something. Um, then store it. Which means that I, in the object obg, which is of type mstreet game, and the attribute selected game object, I store whatever I have in the local variable game object. If I don't do, if there is no game object, I will still do this message and I will still return the same uh, game object that I had before. So now I have stored the selected object, if, I did, if there was a selected ob an object to select, um, inside this object or inside this class, which means that when I look at look for it here, I actually uh, am able to find it. Which means down here in the test, let's hide this one because I don't need it there right now. In the test, when I look for the selected object, I get something. I should get something, and then I can start looking at the interaction types that are available for this test object. That means that for the game object, it's up here. Um, which was really empty at the moment. 
throw in a few page breaks here as well. I need to add the method get interaction types. like that and what I want to do there I want to or an empty list if I don't have any go look for the attribute called interaction types and the object referred to by obj and if you're wondering what that noise is it's the iron curtain going up behind my back never mind that so then i need to have the interaction types available as an attribute to my class let's add that um, I want them to have I want to be able to use them in my constructor so let's give them a, uh, give me a way to refer to them um, by default it's an empty list it is a list And it is a list of the available interaction types for this particular type of game object. Okay, so now I can get those interaction types and I will get nothing out of this because there are none. Which means that when I initialize things, when I initialize my test object over here, I need to actually define some interaction types. In order to define those interaction types, I will need to also get me uh, a class for the interaction types. Let's inherit from the game element for them simply because then I have uh, a name and I don't need to uh, write that again um, so that's easy for me a bit lazy uh, the moment I start adding more things to the game element maybe an interaction type shouldn't be just a game element but uh, right now it's well it's a lazy way out for me um, which means I don't need any more local attributes, or not local attributes, but more attributes for this particular class. Uh, and I don't need the documentation either. Right, so here in the init method, let's define a few interaction types. should be lowercase and it should be not types but singular types type okay so now I have two interaction types that should be sufficient right and I will I want to give them to my test object here in the constructor which I can do since I added the uh, ability to access it with the init arg option uh, I want to have
take and drop in there. Fair enough. Um, that should take care of things for me, right? So now I have interaction types. I have two of them. I give them in my init method. So when I call get interaction types, I should get a list consisting of two elements, take and drop. Um, so this should pass. Except I missed somewhere. Ah, yeah. It's not called game element, it's called M Streets game element. And I missed a parenthesis somewhere. Yep. And now I have a passing test. What does that mean for me? That means that I have I've got a game. That's good. Let's hide more of these. Uh, I have a game. As before, I have a test object, and when I get when I check for available interactions, um, I get something which is not uh, an empty list at least. Now, what do I want to do with that? Well, I want to check that if I look for a particular interaction type, I get that interaction type. Makes sense, right? So I keep this in a local variable. This is where I actually start testing the method that I'm supposed to test. Before this, in this particular test, it shouldn't, those two should nots are basically just sanity checks that everything is as it should. Now I start uh, um, actually testing things. So I get the select an interaction type on the game object that I have and the name of that interaction type that I'm looking for is take. That's nice. And whatever I get should be something, it shouldn't be nil. Um, and if I look at the name of whatever I got, I should it should be take. So I actually get uh, a take interaction type and not something else. So get the name attribute out of the object item that I have in IT test and compare it with take and that should be the same thing. Okay. So close things up, kill those two, can reevaluate and now because I don't have I haven't implemented the select interaction type, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I haven't implemented the select interaction type uh, method yet, which means that that's uh, it's going to fail, which it did. This one I want in my um, M Streets game class. Thus, 
Okay, so what do I want to do with this one then? Uh, let's focus on this method only. Expand things for me. And when I select an interaction type, I want to... I do that on the currently selected game object. So what I want to have is I want to have access to the current game object. Uh, let's see. Um, That's the first thing. Um, next thing is to go looking for the interaction type inside the, um, this, this currently selected object. Um, and let's be nice and check first that I actually got an object out of this. So I get an object. If I if this is nil it will um no actually it's going to be an and so if selected object is nil it's going to uh, stop executing here. If uh, I have something in selected object then it'll continue running and then it'll uh, go looking for the um, it should go looking for something called interaction name in uh, the list of interaction types that I have in that object. Um, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that through a method. Okay, uh, and then what I have now is I have the object selected and I have an interaction if there was one. Um, so all I want to do really now is to uh, store it uh, in this class so that next time I go in and I see oh what's the interaction type I don't have to go run to the game object all, uh, again because let's cache things locally. Uh, I can do that in a method in an attribute declaration or a variable declaration um, just to be lazy. Did I actually get an interaction uh, back? Otherwise there's no point in updating things. Um, There we go. Basically, if I have anything, let's continue running. And in that case, uh, in the object referred to by obj, not game, sorry. Um, and in the attribute called selected interaction, store the local whatever is in the local variable selected interaction. And return something as well. return the selected interaction which means I need to extend my game class with a selected interaction um, attribute Uh, 
There we go. That should take care of things for me, right? Um, go back up to the game object class because now I need to actually look for the selected interaction over here. I want to do is I want to look for the interaction name in the name attribute of whatever I have in my in the attribute that I have in uh, the game object class. So ORF uh, the current object and the interaction type. This gives me a list and this runs through that list looking at the name attribute of every object in this uh, list and compares it with the interaction name. If it matches, it returns it. See what I've got? So I got a lot of error messages here. No applicable method. Uh, select an interaction type for a game and something, let's see, yeah, that didn't help. If I expand this a bit, it's going to be slightly easier to read for me. I'm guessing that this is where things go wrong. This one looks okay. Ah, same old problem. Missing a little S in M streets. Right. So what have I done now with the select interaction type? Well, I've gone and looked for the currently selected object and I um, make sure that I have one and then I go looking for a particular interaction type from that object. Um, then I, first of all, I make sure that I got something, otherwise I won't overwrite whatever was recently selected. Otherwise I'll store that in the attribute in the game class called selected interaction. That's nice, fine and dandy. Um, 
and that means that when I run, come down to the test, uh, I select interaction type on the game, which means that it'll run off to the game object and actually get something that's in the game object, uh, and I get something back, and I indeed get the take back. And that, my friends, let's keep this open for a while, is the second test written. And I'm going to smile a bit at you here in case I decide to cut this video later.